Hello guys and gals, ETCG here, and in this video you will learn how to dual boot Kali Linux with Mac OS X. This means that whenever you turn on your computer, you will have an option to boot either Mac or Kali. You will need a Mac with Mac OS X installed with at least 20 gigabytes of free space, and an internet connection, preferably wired. I'll probably provide instructions in the description on how to do this if you need to use wireless. And then a 4 gigabyte or more flash drive. So, to start, we need to make the flash drive bootable so we can run a Debian installer so then we can eventually install Kali Linux. So, first go to my website. A link to this will be in the description. Click Downloads. Downloads mention my videos. Bootable Drive Maker for Mac. And save the file. Quit out of that. Open up Terminal. Type in sudo bash and type in your password. You won't be able to see it as you type. I type in chmod plus x and then open up a finder window, downloads, and then click and drag in the file you just downloaded. Hit enter. Now type bash and click and drag the file you just entered in again. Enter. So now we want option B, so type in a capital B, enter. This will take a while to download and convert. So in the meantime, plug in your flash drive. Open up Disk Utility. Now find your flash drive. For me, it's down here. Uh, click Erase. Name it Linux, MS-DOS fat, and then master boot record, erase. Well, that's erasing. Click, click, look down here under device, and it should say disk, and then a number. For me, it's disk two, but it may change for you. And make sure you remember that number, because if you don't, it might ruin your system. So instead of the volume here, click the main drive, and then go here to device and then it says disk 2 for me so just remember that because we'll need it later on in here so next we need to partition our main hard drive so we can have a partition for Kali Linux so click your main drive for me it's this right here click partition your main drive should be automatically selected now click the plus button now you can make whatever size you want I'm going to make mine 22 name it uh, I'm going to name it Kali and MS-DOS so yeah, you have to make it MS-DOS and you can name, I would suggest name it Kali but it's your choice it has to be 20 gigabytes or more of a uh, partition size so when you click apply partition and continue Okay, so we're back and the partition was successful. Partitioning was successful. So now you can. Okay, so yeah, you can just close out disk utility and then run this again. That may or may not happen to you, but to me it did. So now just enter B. Let it download and convert, and then I'll cut this part out again, and then I'll be back when it asks for the drive number. Okay, so now that's done again type in the disk number, for us it was disk 2, enter, and then this is what should pop up. And so now this is the part that will take a really long time, so um, you also have a last chance to abort too, just hit control and see at the same time. I'll cut this part out and I'll see you after this is done being created. Alright, we're back, and it looks like it was successful as it says down here. So now you can just click ignore. And then it says drive created, so it's all good. So you can type exit. And then you can just close out of this window here. So now we need to restart our computers to now boot Debian. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so now we need to restart our computer. And 
and hold down the option key on your keyboard. Either one is fine. But this will just make it so we can boot into our flash drive. And then select the one that says EFI boot that is select like right here. Enter. Now we want to do an, an install, so make sure the top option is selected. This is a bit hard to see though on the camera, but whatever. So install. This will take a little while to load. Now select your language and all the other stuff. And also, while this you have, when this is running, you have to have it connected to an Ethernet cord because wireless doesn't work well. If you do, you can't use Ethernet. You have to get the full CD image, which you can find on Debian's website. Except uh, I'm not going to have, provide any instructions on how to use that. And you also need a bigger flash drive too than four gigabytes, probably like at least eight. But you'll have to get that, and uh, then you won't need Ethernet. But it also takes a lot more time to download. Whereas this, it just downloads everything it needs in the installer. Um, click. You get this message right here. Click no. I'm gonna name mine. Um, well, I'll just name it etcg. Continue. Domain name. Continue. And right here, you do want to type in a root password because you want to have a root account because that's what Cal uses by default. Okay, so now I need to set up a user account. So I'm going to make my name TCG username. Just password. For this, I'm going to also uh, turn it off so you don't see my password. Okay, so now we're back on. Select the time zone, enter. Uh, go down manual and now you need to find the partition that you created earlier in disk utility for that's uh, 20 gigabytes plus so I made mine 22 I think it was but I can't remember for sure and also you should only have one drive here not two I just have a second drive installed on my computer so find the one that's roughly the same size that you set so for me mine was roughly 22 so 21.9 cuts it and right here, you also can see FAT32. That's the equivalent of ms.fat and Mac, so that's it. So you just hit enter then. And you use use as. And then it set it to extension 4. Now mount point, enter. We need to do slash. No options, default, label. You can name it this, whatever you want. I'm just going to name mine etcg for. That's what I do. E T C okay. Enter. Uh, and then leave the rest of this the same. And then hit enter. That last option. So now you should see here has a slash inside, extension four. Then F. And then there's size and then number. So then you need to write do that. Finish partitioning and write changes to disk. Enter. This is just hit no. For this, just make sure it's correct and then hit yes. Uh, just make sure. That yeah, looks about right. Yes. Okay, now this step will take a pretty long time if I remember correctly so I'll just cut this part out okay so now we're back after that part so you just need to select this your mirror and I'm just selecting the top one there no I'm an HTTP proxy enter okay now this part will probably take a little while too so I'll just cut this part out okay here this is just a message asking if you want to participate in this survey uh, I you probably don't want to participate in it, no. And then the rest of this will should take uh, maybe 
a little while. Oh yeah, and then you have to select this. So select spacebar for GNOME. And I want an SSH server on mine, but you probably don't. So I'm just gonna select that. But really all you need all you need to do is just select GNOME right here. Where the red part is on right there, just hit a spacebar on it. So uh, after that's done, hit enter. And then the rest of this should take a decent amount of time, so I'll just cut this part out. So when everything's done, you should get this message. It's asking you to reboot your computer. So, it's, so you need to remove the USB drive. Then hit enter for continue. It should boot right into Debian. And after it's done booting into Debian, we're going to install Kali Linux. So enter. And I don't want you to see my password, so I'm just going to stop it here. Okay, and then hit sign in or enter. So here we have Debian. So if you're doing this wirelessly, which is I don't recommend, right now you would go to the link in the description. Uh, bit.do slash b43 gets link but I'll have to check that in later uh, that will be in the description and then you'll have to install a dot deb package so so you can use the Wi-Fi except it's a lot slower so yeah I'd recommend using Ethernet so open up a web browser then we'll just go to my website downloads downloads mention my videos and David DeCali is what we need here and then save file okay now it's saved so now I can close out of here open up terminal Now we need to write sudo bash. Oh yeah, sorry, su. Because I forgot that way. Oh, yeah, and then I'm going to <coughs> cut this part out since I don't want you seeing my password. So after after you, after you finish typing your password, hit enter, and then you should be into the root account. So now type in. This is just like before. Ch mod. Eps X. I need to open up the file explorer. Go downloads. Debian to Kali dot bash. Oops. Enter. Now I need to write bash. And then click and drag this over. Oh yeah, so now you see the warning, disable sleep and suspending your computer. Um, well actually I'll just close out of this one first since we don't need it open. So do this, go to settings. Go to power. Uh, dim screen with an act to turn that off. Blank screen, never. Bluetooth off. As well, you, do, you can keep it on if you want, but I don't want it on. I'm going to spend off, and that looks good. So it doesn't, shouldn't turn off on me. Close out of that. Now type in Y, enter. <clears throat> and now this entire process will take a really long time. You might get some uh, prompts for the installation. Since this will take a really long time, I'm just going to cut the video, and then I'll start it up again when that gets to that point. Okay, so you'll end up with this prompt right here. Just type in Q. Okay, for this prompt, it's asking if it should automatically restart services. You want it to do yes. Enter. Unfortunately, I didn't get the reboot in the recording because I cut it, but uh, after your machine reboots, it should boot right into Kali Linux. And here you have it. Everything's switched over pretty much. 
show you here how you can make it so it looks more like Kali because it doesn't look like that by default. Just go into Tweaks, Tweak Tool. You can enable things like this, but have the icons on the desktop like that. You also need to enable Applications menu and the, where is it? Places, Places Status Indicator, like so. And then, like pretty much everything's here, like for like enabling, like customizing GNOME. So you can just go through all these options here and then just select what you like. I might, I don't think I want that. And yeah, so you can just go through all these tabs in this tweak tool and just like enable what you want and disable what you don't want.